Taking aid to Gaza two weeks ago is having consequences beyond just political condemnation for Israel. Celebrities are cancelling concerts, companies are taking their money elsewhere, and trade unions want a rejection of Israeli goods. RT's Paula Slear looks at the backlash. Thousands take to the streets against Israel's attack on an aid flotilla, in which nine were shot dead. International condemnation and outrage against the Jewish state mounts, on top of criticism of Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu for his settlement expansion policies, which are illegal under international law. Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas has banned Palestinians from buying Israeli products made in the settlements, but only around 2 to 3 percent of Israeli exports are settlement made. Pro-Palestinian campaigners want to widen the campaign, calling for an international trade, cultural and academic boycott of Israel, and targeting companies worldwide involved in projects connected to the Israeli occupation. We are asking them, you have to meet your morals, you have first to their countries even. You have to disinvest from this. You have to stop this relation because you are responsible, you are responsible over the oppression of the Palestinians. Eyal Cohen is miserable. For weeks he's been looking forward to the Pixies rock concert. But as did Elvis Costello, Gil Scott Heron and Santana, the group recently announced it was cancelling its first ever concert in Israel. It seems that more international artists don't want to be seen as supportive of Israeli government policy towards Palestinians which English rock star Costello said represented humiliation and intimidation. I think the, they thought that there will be consequences if they don't come, um, because the rest of the world will look up to the band and say, we don't want them to come over here because they are pro-Israeli. Denmark's largest bank, Danske Bank, has also announced it's pulling out of two Israeli companies involved in the settlements. Elbert Systems provides surveillance equipment for the separation wall, and Africa Israel builds Jewish houses in the West Bank. Neither company would talk to us on camera. But Israel says the bank is singling it out unfairly and disproportionately compared to other countries with human rights issues. Now, if the issue were really human rights, you'd think they'd, they'd start with China or with the Sudan, which, of course, has uh, uh, a civil war going on uh, now. You could pick uh, many countries and you would be hard-pressed to find a country which has as good a human rights record as, as uh, the little state of Israel. But Palestinians disagree. Only international condemnation will change Israel's actions, they say. It's the only abuser of human rights, the only major violator of international law, that's accepted in the West as a democracy and receives enormous financial aid, academic, cultural, diplomatic aid from Western mainstream governments. In other words, it is the West that put Israel on a pedestal as an exception, as above international law. Israelis fear a boycott from Europe, which is the country's largest export market. Already, the European Court of Justice has ruled that goods made in the settlements are not Israeli and therefore don't benefit from preferential access to EU markets. Israel has rejected an international inquiry into the flotilla raid, adding fuel to the campaign of those who want to boycott the Jewish state. The strains of a siege are now being felt not just by Gazans, but by Israel's political leaders who are facing increasing international pressure to bring it to an end. Paul Eslia, RT.